Hey everyone, Chris here from Maven Analytics, and it's time for the next video in our Ask Maven series. This is where instructors talk about some of the most common and interesting questions that we get from students around the world. For today's question, it comes from a student named Tim. Tim reached out to me and said, hey Chris, got this Excel report. It has two filters, two drop-down lists built with data validation. How can I make the second list dynamically update based on a selection from the first. In other words, Tim was trying to create a dependent dropdown list. And this is a common question, a pretty common use case for analysts, especially when you're dealing with hierarchical data. So things like company location, department and employee names, or product category, subcategory, and SKU. Those are great cases where dependent dropdowns can be really valuable. There are a few ways to do it. I'm going to show you how you can build them using dynamic array formulas like filter, sort, and unique. Let's go ahead and jump into Excel and see if we can make this work. All right, so here we are in Excel. Let's take a look at the data set that we're working with here. Um, here in columns B through J, we've got this table of World Bank data and it's at the country level. So we've got an index and a code for each country. We've got the region that that country is part of, and then some information about life expectancy, population, unemployment rate, GDP in millions, that's US dollars, and GDP category here. Now, if I scroll to the right, you'll see we've built a little scorecard or report, dashboard, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this should look familiar for those who have taken our formulas and functions course. Uh, this is entirely built using XLOOKUP functions, so all the functionality is already built out. Um, I've just made one adjustment here, which is that instead of simply selecting a country here in column U from the entire list, I actually added a second dropdown for region here in column R. And the idea here is to allow a user to narrow in on a region first and then only see a list of countries that are part of that region. So this is a perfect use case for using data validation and dependent dropdowns. And that's exactly what I want to show you here. Now, there are a few ways I could do this. I could use named ranges and functions like indirect. But in this case, I'm going to show you the approach using dynamic array formulas. I like this approach. It's a little bit more flexible. We're going to use sort, filter, and unique. Uh, and it's going to be a really elegant way to tackle this problem. So first things first, I need to create these source lists for these data validation dropdown menus. And the first list is gonna be the list of regions from my table. So what I could do here is basically create a list of the unique regions. So to do that, I'm gonna use the unique dynamic array function. And the array of values is right here in my column E. It's the regions uh, field in the countries table. Note this is a structured reference because this range is formatted as a table. And if I were to just close off the parenthesis and end it, I get my unique list of regions. That would work just fine for the dropdown list, but I'd like to sort this just to make it a little bit more user-friendly. So I'll wrap that unique formula in a sort, close the parenthesis, press enter, boom. Now I get the default alphabetical sorting A to Z and that can serve as the uh, basically the source for my first data validation list. So let's go ahead and select R2 here. I'm going to go to data, data validation, and I'm going to allow a list. And I'm going to point to that source. Now note one thing that happens here, which is that by default it shows the fixed references from W2 through W8, but because I've generated this list using dynamic arrays, I can actually use the spill operator here after W2, that's the pound or hash sign, press enter and check this out. It gives me that full list just like I would if I selected those cells manually. But the beauty of this is that now if I add more regions to my table and this list in column W grows, because I use that spill operator, my list will grow along with it dynamically no updates, no manual work needed. So that's great. Let's go ahead and select one of these values like North America. And here's the catch. Now we want to create another drop down list for country. 
but we can't just follow the same approach and return all of the countries in our table. We only want to filter down the countries based on my selection in the first dropdown. So that's a little bit of a hint there. I'm going to need to use another dynamic array function, the filter function, just to return the list of countries, in this case, in North America. So let's go ahead and start with that filter function, equals filter. And the values that I want to filter are my countries, right here in the country column. And the criteria that I want to filter on are basically cases where the region, right here in column E, is equal to whatever I've selected in that first dropdown, R2. Okay, I can close the parenthesis. That wraps up our filter function, but we're not done yet. We want to create a unique list of countries, and just like we did before, let's sort it A to Z just to make it user-friendly. So check this out. We're going to wrap it in a sort and a unique function. Open up two parentheses, close off two parentheses, press enter, and boom, there you go. We've got our list of three countries that right now are part of North America. That's going to serve as the source for our second drop-down list. So, whoops, don't need the equal sign there. I'm just going to select you two, data, data validation. We want a list and our source. Just like before, it's going to be x2 pound or spill, enter, OK, and there we go. And now when we select a country here, look at this. All of the data in that dashboard, that scorecard that we built, starts to populate. So we see all that information for Canada, for Bermuda, for the United States. And let's go ahead and test that dependency on the first dropdown. So how about South Asia? Here we go. Now we see all South Asian countries. We can try Europe and Central Asia. Austria looks like it's working perfectly. So there you have it. Quick demo on how to create dependent dropdown lists using dynamic array functions. All right, that just about wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and shoot me a comment down below and make sure to like this video or subscribe to Maven Analytics if you wanna see more of this type of content in the future. So until then, happy learning. And I'll see you next time.